Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, it's 5.30. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I see all councillors are in attendance. Uh, any disclosure or pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Uh, seeing none, uh, can I get a nomination for appointment of uh, vice chair for this committee, please? Uh, councillor Alsop. Yes, I'd like to nominate uh, councillor Brown. Okay, uh, councillor Millette. Second that. Uh, any other nominations? See none. Uh, Councillor Brown, are you good to stand for vice chair? Okay. Uh, all in favor? That's motions carried. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just have some opening remarks here before we get into the public meeting. The public meeting is being heard by the City Council Planning Advisory Committee, and public notice has been given in accordance with the Planning Act. The non elected members of the Planning Advisory Committee are Mr. John Bell Tudis, Mr. David Joyce, and Mr. Paul Jennings. Citizen appointees may ask questions or, and participate in the discussion in order to assist in making recommendations to City Council, but may not make motions or vote in connection with the public meeting. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Planning Committee or City Council before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of City Council or the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting, or make written submissions to the City of Belleville before the related bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless in the opinion of the Tribunal there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Comments received at this public meeting as well as written comments will be considered by the Engineering and Development Services Department in analysis of the application that were part of the public meeting tonight. For further information on how to provide comments to the city regarding an application for this public meeting, please email planning at babble.ca. A recommendation report will be brought forward upon receipt of all agency and public comments in the future. Any persons wishing to be advised of the Babel Planning Advisory Committee's recommendations with respect to today's applications are requested to provide their name and address as well as the application in which they have an interest in writing to the city of Belleville. And with that, we'll move into public meetings. Uh, 3.1, Notice of Complete Application, an introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 3014, blocks 28 to 33 of plan 21M309, and blocks 38 to 43 of plan 21M-310, Riverstone Way and Athabasca Drive, Riverstone Subdivision, City of Balval, owner is Gertzma Homes Limited, agent is Nick Pelleggi, of Macaulay Show Me Housing Limited and file number is B-77-1162. If staff could present the application, please. Certainly, Mr. Chair. The subject land is on the east side of Farnham Road, north of Wims Way, and south of Scott Drive. It consists of 12 vacant blocks, including a central private laneway, and each block is permitted for four townhouse dwellings. The application proposes to add a definition for a stacked townhouse dwelling and a back-to-back -back townhouse dwelling and to rezone the subject land from medium density residential R31 zone to medium density residential R3X zone to permit stacked and back-to-back -back townhouses with respect, uh, special provisions. On December 15th of last year, the application was revised to remove block number 38 from the scope of this application. The owner has moved forward to construct uh, four townhouse dwellings on that block. The revised ap uh, rezoning application would increase the number of dwelling units from 48 to 92 units. The official plan designation of the subject land is residential land use, and we have received uh, six uh, correspondence from six members of the public in opposition of this application. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for that. Um, has anyone wanted to speak in favor of the application? If you could just act activate the microphone there, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Mayor, members of council, and uh, members of the committee. I'm the applicant, so I have a presentation that was supposed to be loaded. Thank you very much. Uh, so good evening again. 
to the members of the committee. My name is Nick Pileggi and I'm a planner with Macaulay Shiomi Housen. I'm the planning consultant for Geertz Mahomes and the applications as has been noted are for zoning bylaw amendment for 12 to 58 Riverstone Way and 21 to 67 Athabasca Drive. The property is located east of Farnham Road and includes lands that are on the south side of Riverstone Way and north of Athabasca. The lands are located in a registered draft plan of subdivision, or sorry, a registered plan of subdivision and are generally shown in the red, the red oval uh, on the plan in front of you. The remainder of the subdivision is um, largely single family detached homes and townhouses. Each of the blocks uh, that is subject to the application uh, is set to be built with uh, at least four townhouse units. So this is a zoom in of the blocks uh, that are uh, proposed to have the additional requirements. Uh, so on the north side is Riverstone Way and on the south side is Athabasca Drive and there's a uh, private laneway through the middle of the site. The application would have the effect of adding stacked townhouses and back-to-back -to -back townhouses as permitted uses and applying site-specific development standards to each as outlined in the staff report. This, this is a concept showing what the back-to-back -to -back townhouses would look like. Um, this this uh, is from another site, so it has five units, but each of them would be four units. And as you can see, the units are basically attached. They're typical townhouse units that are attached at the back as well. Uh, those would be accessed from Athabasca Drive and the private lane. And you can see from the elevations that they are similar to a regular townhouse property. The uh, stacked townhouse units uh, in front of you are shown. Um, what you can see on the left is what a typical um, site plan would look like. Basically, in this case, all of the units would be accessed from uh, personally, like the front door would be on the public road, either Riverstone or Athabasca, and all of the garage doors would be from the rear. And that's where you can see on the site plan in this area, the larger setbacks are your driveways uh, in the laneway. So what you would see at the public streets is what uh, the elevation you see on the right. So currently, uh, as has been noted, these blocks permit 48 townhouses. Uh, I wrote here that an additional 48 units are proposed to be added, but that's been revised to 44 units because one of the townhouse blocks is already being developed for townhouses, so there wouldn't be additional units on, on that block. So it's actually 44 units proposed to be added. Um, we did submit a servicing review, and in the staff report, I saw the transportation and servicing reviews have de determined uh, either no comments um, and we believe that the additional units can be supported. Uh, it is a continuation of a low density housing form including the typical setbacks and lotting pattern and there's no changes proposed to the draft plan of subdivision. What you would get is the addition of stacked and back to back, to back townhouse units which will increase housing choice uh, and provide a variety of unit types and hopefully a more affordable product to the community as well. So that's what I had for the uh, presentation this evening and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hey, thank you for that. Uh, any questions from committee members? Uh, Councillor Brown. Hi, I'm just curious, um, in the back-to-backs, there is no um, outdoor space attached to the unit other than the front yard for each of I at the entryway, is that correct? That's correct. Through you, uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, you, oh, sorry, the presentation is not up there anymore, but basically uh, there's typically an amenity like a balcony provided on the second or third floor for your typical barbecue or other, um, it, it is a small amenity area, but uh, an amenity is provided. You can see above the garage doors. Sorry, just as a follow-up, I believe in the, the uh, material that was provided, there's two balconies, one off the uh, bedroom upstairs and one where the, as you point out, nearer to the kitchen, is That's that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of community members? Uh, Mr. Jennings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, could you show us which areas will have the back-to-back? -back? Uh, am I understanding correctly that 
half of them would then have driveways on the main road and half the back half would have front doors and driveways in the back lanes is that correct that's correct so we're proposing only the stacked units along Riverstone Way, so that would Riverstone would have all front doors, and the lane would have all of the garages. There, there's man doors on the back side as well, or person doors on the back side as well. On the Athabasca frontage, so the ones at the bottom of the screen, um, you'd have the potential for either stacked units or back-to-back -back units. If they were back-to-back -back units, their front door would be on the lane. Okay. Um. I guess my concern was, uh, I know the subdivision you gave us was in Kingston, not, not this subdivision, but the way the, um, the design works, it looks like there's only six meters for parking, uh, which would mean that anybody who owns a pickup truck would have their pickup truck sticking in either across the sidewalk or into the lane. Um, I guess I'm concerned, I think there's a big problem right now in some of those subdivisions with uh, ticketing people parking on the city property and I was just wondering how um, if these if we're targeting these houses to uh, trades and, and trade workers and they're driving their trucks home from work they won't be able to fit in any of those driveways concerns me a little bit yeah through through you mr. chair so I think the typical parking spot in Belleville requirement is six meters it might actually be less in most municipalities it's 5.7 or 5.8 meters so I understand the concern with the larger vehicles uh, but that's the minimum requirement of the bylaw, and we're meeting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realize that it meets the minimums. I just think that maybe we should be going uh, out of our way to accommodate the people we're trying to attract to the city by having you know, parking spaces available. Because I think, like I said, we're experiencing some issues with street parking and uh, people parking on public property. That was my, my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions of community members? Uh, I have two actually. Um, one is related to parking as well. So how many parking spaces per unit uh, are you proposing? So the minimum is two. Uh, in the case of the back-to-back -back units, you'd have the one space in the garage, um, the, basically the triangle areas. So you'd have the one space in the garage and then the one space in the um, driveway. So that's the two spaces there. Um, in the um, back, Sorry, the stacked units, the minimum again is two. So there would be a, the minimum requirement of one indoor and one outdoor. Uh, the setback in this case is quite large. So if they were smaller vehicles, you actually in the stacked units might be able to get three vehicles in there. Okay, and then it, how, many you, or how many bedrooms are in each unit? So the typical would be three bedroom units, okay. uh, almost for all of them. In the back-to-backs, what you'll see is you can only really do the interior units because there's no windows on the sides or the back of the interior units. You can't have a bedroom that doesn't have a window. So those units would only have two bedrooms facing forward and then the back would be your stairs and your washrooms and so on. Okay, thank you. And I know you're the, the agent for the applicant here, um, but I have got parking complaints uh, in that area, particularly people that are buying up those units who are then renting them and renting them by the room and each have a car. And, uh, you know, so they're expressing frustration to, to me as their counselor uh, representing the area and obviously for the decisions here, but that's the byproduct of this. So um, I know the, the push is to have less parking uh, more and more, but, and I know that that doesn't make profit. Uh, driveway doesn't provide profit, the building does. Uh, but the fact of the matter is is that the, the people that are moving into that area are looking for places to park their vehicles and, and Mr. Jennings bang on if we're going to attract trades We need to make sure that we have parking spaces for people to fit So this is what I'm hearing from the customers that are purchasing in that area now uh, So something to be mindful of. Thank you uh, Any other questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Enright Miller Thank you through you chair um, high density living is always parking is always a problem, right? The laneway that's that's intersecting between is there is it a two way laneway? Is there any area there that there could be visitor parking? Was there any thought for some visitor parking for the blocks? Yeah, the uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the laneway is two way. Um, I don't think it would meet the typical standard for two way traffic and uh, parking as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Is there anyone else willing to speak in favor of the application? And one last time, anyone wanting to speak in favor of the application? Anyone wanting to speak in opposition of the application? If you could please come forward, state your, activate the mic and state your name and you have the floor. You just have to, you have to press the button to activate the mic. Yep, there you go. I'm quite loud, so. <laughs> it's, the, it's the people watching online that can't okay. hear you without the microphone. I'm Edie Bonasil and I live at 6 Athabasca. I bought down there and closed in May 25th, as a, as a matter of fact. It was not mentioned to me that they were going to change this to high density. I'm a realtor, so that this would have had to be in the works for a couple of years to get this far. I, I feel I've been, you know, it's, it's not fair, and the traffic is horrible down there. I have gone door to door and spoke to people, and right now on that lane, I sent him pictures to City Hall. They're parking there overnight. They, they don't have enough room in the driveways. They're parking on the grass in the, in the townhouses. They're, I mean, it's just, it's just backed right up. It's just, it's gonna turn into a real nightmare and it's gonna be a fight. Because the one fellow that I was talking to today, he was telling me that he was so annoyed because his neighbor come and parked in his driveway and was gonna stay there all night because they started ticketing him. So, and he said, you can't stay there. He said, I might have to get out. That's the kind of stuff that's going on. And now they want to introduce this? Look, I'm all about progress. I'm a realtor. I've been selling in the city for 35 years, but I've never seen anything like this, and I'm really disappointed that it got this far. And it's a waste of money. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from committee members? No, okay, thank Just you. Just one more thing. Yep. There should be some visitor parking somewhere down there. I don't know any unit in Balboa, Barb will tell you, like um, Progress has got visitor parking, Hague has got visitor parking, Singleton's got visitor parking. It's all over, all those units have, North Park has it, they all have visitor parking. Not one bit. I walked all around there and there's no visitor parking anywhere. That's part of the problem. Okay, thank you for those comments. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the application? You can just state your name. Hi, um, Chris Ida. I, uh, like Edie said, we just bought these houses. I'm at 18 Athabasca, and we bought this house under circumstances. Like, we saw all the plans and everything, and this was in, I forget, January or something when we bought it, and it was supposed to be the 48 unit there. So now they're basically doubling the population that's going to be going in that little block. And like, I have a one-year-old daughter, and so now we, she got friends next door. They couldn't make her tonight. but. It's just going to make that whole area overpopulated, and in, it's already a pretty populated area. And I'm also afraid it's going to lower like my house's value, and just kind of feel like we all got backdoored by Gertz Mahomes there. And that's basically all I have to say. Okay. Thank, uh, before we go, any questions of committee members? No. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition of the application? If you could just activate the microphone. Yep, thank you. I wanted to know how wide you claim that the current driveway is because I know that the current dwellings on Riverside Way have that back entrance that they're talking about with the laneway, and I know that it was stated that it's supposed to be a double. Is there a plan on if, how wide that is? If I it's could, not a double. Yeah, I can ask staff to answer that question for okay. you. Okay. If someone would like to take a... Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, it, the laneway itself is not a public road, so it's not designed to local uh, street widths, which are yeah. specifically spe uh, specifically dimensioned. Uh, I'd have to look up the uh, the site or the plan of subdivision for the actual. Okay, yeah, because um, it's not like a two-way; okay. it's a it's a, a it, I mean, it's single a, driveway. Yeah, it, it's a width. condo road. Um, yeah. So, I if you'd like to provide our, your contact information to our uh, our planning inbox at planning at Belleville.ca, I can definitely get you a, an answer for that. Okay, and then I was also wondering where the sidewalk is going to be located on Riverside Crescent because they're, or Riverside Way because they're saying that the Riverside Way houses are going to have the front entrance and the Athabasca are going to have the back, or maybe it's vice versa. But I know that currently on Nipigon. Well, they say that maybe it's two car lengths. It's not because they've put a sidewalk into yeah. a dead-end road. And so, I mean, these current occupants are getting four to five tickets on their cars a week. Like, every single day, multiple cars. And so they'll try and shift a car sideways and park it 
but a tire's on the lawn, so they're getting that. And then they park on the road and they're getting those. And then they park down by the mailboxes because they've made that little lane area and they get tickets there. And it's like they're, they're, on, they're being harassed by, not really harassed, but there's nowhere, like parking's a massive issue over there. And then on top of that, you've got the side streets like Scott Drive that has been utterly destroyed. I know that's where we live. And my kids have to walk that whole street and take a bus from the corner of Farnham Road and Scott Drive. And I've contacted the bus company multiple times, but we have so many cars parked on the street that the buses are saying, we can't get down there. Like, we can't come down and access this street. The bus just can't, can't clear the way. So my kids continue to walk up this. It's utterly destroyed. It's gone from paved to muddy potholes completely destroyed so we have a big like we have a big parking issue in this area and to add to double the units it it, it just <laughs> like there there isn't enough parking currently for who's there and then uh, I mean I'm only talking about Nipigon I'm talking about just what you would originally have plans for regular townhouses they can't provide the parking for that to add 50 more units on top it's just I just don't see the way any questions from committee members? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition of the application? If you, sorry, if, if you could activate the microphone again, I'll, I'll give you a second sorry. round for sure. Okay. I just want to mention that half those houses are not occupied either. They're up and they've got lock boxes on them and they're getting them ready to rent them. So, I mean, that, that even makes a bigger problem because once they become, we're talking about the ones that are up, not the ones that they're proposing to build. So that's even going to be a bigger problem. And it will affect the resale. I, I've been selling long enough that I know this will be, well, it'll be devastating for me. I'm older and I really did not need to, for this to happen to me at this time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the applica application? And uh, one more time, anyone wanting to speak in opposition of the application? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Councillor Alsop, would you mind just deactivating that microphone? Thank you. Uh, so I have a resolution that the Gertzma Homes Limited application B-77-1162 be referred to the regular planning advisory committee meeting for consideration. Moved by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Millette. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 3.2 Notice of Complete Application and Introductory Public Meeting for Proposed Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw 10 245, Northern post Portion of 40 Yeoman Street, City of Balville. Owner is 2749275 Ontario Incorporated. Agent is Spencer Hutchison of RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated. And the file number is B 77 1179. Staff could present the application, please. Certainly, Mr. Chair. The subject land is the northern portion of the Blen Bleaker property. Last year, the applications were uh, approved to permit the development of 137 uh, residential units, comprising of a 10-story apartment building and up to 10, or sorry, 37 townhouse dwellings, subject to a holding symbol. Consent application B922 separated the apartment building and the ten townhouse dwellings onto separate parcels to enable them to be developed independently. As a condition of consent, this application proposes to amend the existing residential eighth density RA2H zone for the apartment building and to rezone uh, the townhouse parcel to an R residential fifth density R5XH zone uh, with special provisions for uh, townhouse dwellings. The requested special provisions reflect the separation of the uses onto the independent parcels by narrowing the uses as well as uh, revising uh, the provisions accordingly. The holding provision is proposed to remain unchanged and be applied to the new zone. The official plan designation of, this subject, of the subject lands is residential land use. Staff have received correspondence from one member of the public in support of the application. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hutchison, I believe you have a presentation. Thank you, Chair Carr and uh, members of the committee. Welcome to 2023. Um, 
essentially I, I'd like to say in overview, this is a bit of a technicality. Um, we go back a year and the proposed use is pretty much the same, except in the in interim in uh, May of this year, we severed the parcel subject to the zoning. Um, as you can appreciate, uh, a 10 story apartment building and 37 townhouses all on one block requires a, a massive economic input to develop. The object here is to separate the apartment from the townhouses and allow two developers to develop the properties separately. So that's the whole gist. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll go through my presentation. Um, I will move this a touch. Is this a touch screen or not? So this is the opening shot. This is the, the property on the east side of Sydney Street. Catherine Street is to the north and Yeoman is to the east. And um, the dashed line ref reflects the um, proposed severance that was conditionally approved uh, by the Committee of Adjustment. So site context, the, the property is just over 1.76 hectares. It's in the serviced area of Valval, and uh, as noted, the, the frontage is on three properties. Uh, to the south is, is vacant land that everyone's hoping for commercial development this year. Uh, to the north, on the north side of Catherine, there are residential uses. Um, to the west, across Sydney Street, is, is open space that is in the works for redevelopment as well. And east of the subject property across Yeomans is uh, more residential. So clearly this is an area that's uh, gonna see a lot of development, I think in 2023. Um, so as noted in May, we submitted a consent application and was approved uh, subject to conditions and one of the conditions was making the zoning work. And then subsequently to the city of Belleville, the rezoning, uh, some information from ourselves at RFA, uh, we re-borrowed uh, the Dillon consulting report for that meeting back in September because it covered the major bases and we provided a couple of concept plans of the apartment building and the uh, apartment or sorry the townhouses and apartment uh, so good just to re refresh the consent application you can see the severed parcel on the west side in the red and it was severed off to house the uh, apartment building and it has a lot area of just about 5,700 square meters. And the retained parcel to the east is over 10,700 square meters and it would have the townhouses. And as again repeating, it was approved subject to a rezoning. And this is an artist's rendition uh, looking west sort of elevated on Catherine Street in the distance at the back or the west side you see the apartment building and in the foreground you have townhouses fronting on to Yeoman, uh, two blocks of townhouses in the center of the property and to the right side of the screen are townhouses facing Catherine Street. And this is sort of looking, there's a central uh, amenity area, park area, outdoor area between the two rows of, of townhouses. Um, the other thing um, this shows is the use of uh, amenity space within the building on the roof in addition to uh, ground amenity area. Um, just across our bases, provincial policy statement, growth plan. It's city, city center and as I referred to, it's gonna be an area of, of interesting development, residential, commercial, institutional at the, the, the corner there at uh, Sydney and Bridge. Um, and it, it, this is consistent with the provincial policy statement. As my colleague Andrew referred to, the official plan, it's, it's designated residential and there's no request or need for a rezoning application or an official plan amendment. So the next two slides, they're, they're kind of busy, but what they show um, first for the apartment building and then in a moment for the townhouse, what the current R8 zone for the city of Belleville, which is the apartment zone requires in the far left, what the current zoning that is in place at this hour 
and on the far right, the proposed zoning. Um, not to go through every line, but essentially the, th the column for proposed is provo providing uh, requirements that are less onerous or equal to what is there today. Um, and, and we added some in uh, following discussions with staff. Um, for example, the, the current R8 zone halfway down has landscaped area minimum. It's not applicable in the regular R8 zone. In the current R82, it's 35%, and we've managed through this latest reiteration of the, the concept plan to get it up to 43%. Um, so basically, all those criteria meet what was already approved a year ago. And the same thing when we look at the townhouse blocks. The townhouse zone in the Belleville zoning bylaw is R4. That's the standard one on the left. In the, min in the middle is the regular, or sorry, the current R82, and on the far right is the proposed one. And again, um, we line up across the board. Um, we did um, add in a couple of um, extra provisions. Maybe it sort of runs off what we just heard. If you look at amenity area, um, in the proposal now, we have a communal amenity area, which is open to all public, or all the citizens, of 1,300 square meters, which wasn't required before. And amenity area per dwelling unit, under the current R5, it's not a requirement. Under the current zoning, it's a six meters squared, and, and we're providing six units, in, um, sorry, six meters squared. Um, the other thing is um, we're providing um, 1.25 parking spaces for the dwelling. Um, in the zoning bylaw, this would require 48. In the current zoning, it's 196. But don't forget that was the apartment building and the townhouse together as one zone, one parcel. But for this property, there will be 57 parking spaces. And if you look on the concept plan, there is a um, communal parking area, uh, public, uh, sorry, mind blank, uh, par uh, visitor parking. So th just to summarize, uh, November 2021, 137 dwelling units consisting of 100 apartments, 37 townhouses was approved. The current zoning that we're talking about tonight is 107 apartments and 25 townhouses. So in the same ballpark. The architect who did the November 2021 sharpened his pencil, whatever, his computer. So we have a different concept that changes the number. We haven't formally applied for site plan because uh, no developer is at the table yet. It was previously one property. Now we're working on the basis of two properties. Uh, the previous zoning worked when it was all one property. Um, to have two properties, you need two zones, one for the townhouses and one for the apartments, uh, as said there in the next. Um, and as I sort of said in my opening comments, by severing the property, it facilitates the exp expedited development of the subject lands. Um, one developer can focus on the apartment building, and the other developer can fo uh, focus on the townhouses. Otherwise, you really need a big developer with deep pockets to do, you know, a 10-story apartment building and 37 townhouses at one go. Um, my understanding is the current property owners who uh, were involved in a retirement home on Dundas Street West, just west of the river, are looking to retain the apartment building and develop the apartment building. That's what they wish to proceed with, and they're looking to, uh, once this gets approved, hopefully, to sever off the 37 townhouses and put it up for sale and another developer can step in and develop it. So um, basically, any questions I can add to that? Councillor Millett. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Hutchison, are there any, is there any below grade uh, construction proposed in any of this development? The only below grade would be under the apartment building, uh, underground parking, um, in one of the drawings, and, and um, Mr. 
Chan has a very comprehensive report in your agenda, which we haven't replicated. But I think there is one sketch that in dotted lines shows the underground parking. It's slightly bigger than the footprint of the building itself. And there is a ramp that comes down in the southwest corner on the property that ramps down into the underground parking lot. Um, okay, the reason I asked that, uh, yeah, and I know we're discussing the yeah. townhouse portion, and we're, are, we're not discussing in detail that corner, the, uh, the north uh, uh, west corner where the apartment's going. I'm, I'm more concerned. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, well, I, well I, I will have concerns, and I will voice those at that time. But uh, it's common knowledge, or it's public knowledge, that uh, some two decades ago or more, it was discovered that there's a leachate plume um, from the former Nortel site um, that had been uh, studied and we were assured that uh, that plume is more or less um, stabilized. There was some concern that it was migrating in a southeast direction that several years ago when it was discovered. Um, my concern is that any below grade um, work in that area I'm still not 100% convinced that, um, you know, what lies beneath, if you will, uh, is entirely uh, uh, safe. Uh, yeah, Councillor, that's a very wise comment. Um, just to put it in context, in November 2021, when the city and their consultant approved the rezoning, there was a whack of conditions. The zoning was approved subject to a bunch of conditions, and one of them, among many, was the environmental issue. And, and I think uh, my colleague uh, Andrew referred, the conditions before were bringing completely forward, unchanged, because you know we agree these, these studies. So if the, if the committee and then council sees fit to approve this rezoning, um, the the, it's a conditional zoning on about eight things. Unfortunately, I don't have the original conditions. They're, they're available. But there's all sorts of things that have to be done before um, the condition. And, and environmental is a big one because, yes, I know coming in the northwest corner, um, yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from committee members? No? Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? And finally, a third time, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the application? And finally, a third time, anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the application? Seeing none, I have a resolution that the 274-9275 Ontario Incorporated application B-77-1179 be referred to the regular Planning Advisory Committee meeting for consideration. Moved by Councillor Alsop, seconded by Councillor Enright Miller. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 3.3 uh, Notice of Complete Application and Introductory Public Meeting for Proposed Zoning Bylaw Amendment, Bylaw 3014, 452 Clearview Road, City of Balville. Owner is Greg Hagerty. Agent is Rachel Ogilvie of Frontier Homes, Quinty. And file number is B 77 1180. If staff could present the application, please. Certainly, Mr. Chair. The subject land is located on the southeast side of Clearview Road, west of Kelly Road, and north of Townsend Road, and is developed with a single detached dwelling, a storage barn, and a f other accessory structures. Two consent applications have been received uh, to create two new residential lots on the southern portion of the subject land. As anticipated conditions of consent, this application proposes to amend the zoning zoning bylaw 3014 to rezone the, uh, the, the severed portions from rural RU9 zone to rural residential RR zone. The official plan designation of the subject land is rural land use. The staff have not received any correspondence uh, from the public at this time. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Yeah, please come forward if you could activate the mic and state your name, please. 
Hi there, um, I'm Rachel Ogilvie. I'm the agent um, and the one who submitted the application. Um, as stated, we um, have also submitted an application of consent to have um, the land severed into two separate lots. Um, and all we're looking for um, with this is to just have um, all three lots um, switched from rural to rural um, residential. So I know the diagram here shows that we're looking um, to keep the bigger part, portion of the lot um, to rural, but we want all three of them to be rural residential. Um, and that was clarified in some emails um, after this was created. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from community members? No? Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone wanting to speak in opposition of the application? Anyone wanting to speak in opposition of the application? And finally, a third time, anyone wanting to speak in opposition of the application? Okay, seeing none, I have a resolution that the Greg Hegarty application B-77-1180 be referred to the regular planning advisory committee meeting for consideration. Moved by Councillor Alsop, seconded by Councillor Brown. All in favor? That's carried. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting? Councillor Alsop and Councillor Enright Miller, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. All right, moving on to the Planning Advisory Committee. I see we're all in attendance. Any disclosure or pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Seeing none, uh, reading and confirmation of the minutes that the minutes of the City Council Planning uh, Committee meeting and Planning Advisory Committee meeting held on November 7th, 2022, be approved. Mr. Baltudis, Mr. Joyce, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We have no deputations. Uh, correspondence, can I get a motion that correspondence received in the City Clerk's Office be received? Councillor Alsop, Councillor Brown, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, referrals from the public meeting. Notice of complete application in a directory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 3014, blocks 28 to 33, a plan 21M to 309, and blocks 38 to 43, a plan 21M-310, uh, Riverstone Way and Athabasca Drive, Riverstone Subdivision, City of Belleville, owner is Gertz Mahomes Limited, agent is Nick Pelleggi, and Macaulay Show Me Housing Limited, file number is B-77-1162. Resolution reads that report number PP-2023-02 dated January 3rd, 2023, regarding notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended, blocks 28 to 33 of plan 21M309 and blocks 38 to 43 of plan 21M310, City of Bowell County of Hastings be received as information and that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies and municipal departments has been received, assessed and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering and Development Services Department. Moved by Councillor Millett, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Any questions or comments? Councillor Brown. I believe this one is going to be a more difficult decision for the Planning Advisory Committee. Um, I want to point out that we are in the middle of a housing crisis. And so I can appreciate where Gertz Mahomes may be coming from in terms of trying to increase the capacity of the, the number of houses that will be made available. And I admittedly have to applaud him for at least coming up with a solution. Not necessarily a solution that's well received, but a solution nonetheless. Um, I also um, want to acknowledge that, like Councillor Carr, I've received a number of complaints regarding um, parking and bylaw enforcement, but also want to point out that we are also in an age where dependency on uh, vehicles needs to be a consideration environmentally, and so therefore um, we have to weigh both sides. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that those are two things that we collectively should be weighing heavily upon before we make a decision on this one. I appreciate it's only going to staff at this stage, but in the middle of a housing crisis to be able to increase or double the number of houses I think is important, particularly given the Watkins report recently that we received as a council. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yeah, Mr. Joyce. Yeah, I echo uh, Council Brown's comments. Uh, I guess in the discussions with Gertzma or leading up to it, were there any proposals for um, a 
reduce or increase footprint, but not to this level. Because I know we've been many times at planning, we've tweaked it a number of times, and they've gone back and come back with a smaller footprint here. Well, have there been discussions in that regard at this point, or should there be before it either gets approved or declined at this stage? Uh, that that'd be my concern because a number of issues were brought up, parking and otherwise. So. Sure, yeah. and, and at this stage, obviously, we're not. Uh, I realize that I realize we're not there, but I'm just stuff. kind of yeah, throwing I'll that out as a as a point of interest or thought before we uh, before we get to the next. Yeah, meeting. I'll get Mr. Deming to answer that question. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, th there was initial discussions through our pre consultation process. Um, obviously, this one was pre approved through another previous zoning when we initially reviewed the townhouses. Uh, we had another pre-consultation to review this proposal. Uh, subsequent to receiving their application, they did submit a building permit uh, for four townhouses. Uh, so then again, we discussed with them uh, and they revised it to reduce that, to remove that one block. Um, staff do have other concerns that uh, haven't been addressed yet. Uh, one is um, likely we will be recommending uh, an addendum to the traffic impact study was previously submitted. Uh, the increase in units our development engineer has identified as uh, something that we want to further review. So uh, following this meeting, we will be scheduling a meeting to follow up with their, uh, with their agent on this. Okay, I guess, I guess we'll wait, <laughs> wait for the next step, but I just wanted to kind of put on record that this is something that should be considered and, and obviously you are, and whether it's coming from the transportation side or just the capacity issue, so. I mean, infill's important, but at the same time, I can see the concerns here. So I'll wait for, uh, for the next report. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I just want to add my voice to uh, the parking issue. There's, there's the concept plan that we see in drawings that show you know, what it should look like. And then there's the real world in which we all live. You know, and it's not lost on me too. We live in the, the day and age where the province is now saying you can put three units on one lot heavy concentration. Um, again, we all know that planning and some of the provincial policy is very uh, GTA centric. And here we have a situation where, you know, for all intents and purposes, you have a uh, urban area, but it's an island uh, surrounded by a uh, rural area. And uh, so there's still a heavy dependence on cars. And uh, I've heard, you know, we heard tonight from uh, residents, but I've also fielded calls uh, from other residents who were not here tonight uh, who said who basically vo voiced a displeasure with the lack of parking and you know it's not lost on me too that um, despite the talk of affordability that uh, these new units continue to be quote unquote expensive uh, when you look at uh, what uh, the average wage is in the city and so therefore uh, you know I'm hearing that uh, people are buying these and living in them but then renting out uh, space and with it comes another car. And that's the reality we live in. So, you know, in one respect, we, we need the heavy concentration and, you know, we need to applaud uh, builders for doing that. Hopefully they execute it with actual building permits because this is all great theory at this point. Um, they need to deliver. But the fact of the matter is, is we have a parking situation that's a reality that needs to be taken into consideration. And the last thing we need to be doing is compounding the problem by intensificating to the point where there's no place to park. Um, and then people then are parking illegally, uh, which impacts uh, our transportation operational services when they try to do snow clearing. And we would certainly get complaints if the roads aren't clear, so they have to be cleared. And so with that, then people start parking on lawns and boulevards and all the rest of it, and it turns into a mess. And uh, so, that's the reality that's out there. And so while the concept looks great, uh, the reality is is that we're very car centric and we will continue to be for some time. Uh, so I would ask that staff certainly consider the reality that's out there now. Uh, I know I've had the residents asked if they could speak in the bylay areas uh, along the roads of which they are municipally owned and therefore we're required to municipally maintain them in snow events and things of that nature. So those aren't an option for overnight parking. Um, so we need to make sure that development can be able to handle the capacity of the vehiculars, uh, vehicular traffic that's going to be there and park there. So uh, certainly uh, look forward to, to see what comes back. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Wright Miller. Thank you, through you, Chair. 
I just want to reiterate to and I, I share your everybody's sorry everybody's comments about this because parking is a problem. Um, it's a double-edged sword. This one, it really is. Uh, I, I commend Gertzma for you know stepping up and, and creating new housing, but to the to the detriment of the people that are living there. So we need to come to a solution, and maybe that's restrictive covenants when these units are being sold something to you know keep that the vehicular traffic to a minimum. I don't know what that looks like, how that is, but we have a developer here that is a, is a great model in this, in this community, and I'm sure if there's anything that can be done, he would be the one that would help and listen to the community around him. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'll be interested to take part in any, any you know, thing that could try to soften this for, for the people and see where this goes, and if there's anything out there that we can come to to help it, you know, I'm in. Thank you. Mr. Beltutis. Uh, thanks, Chair. See, I guess this goes back to the staff. This proposal that he's, that this developer is sort of proposing to us, does it meet all the requirements? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, by all the requirements, can you just clarify? Around, just so that if we turn it down, that he doesn't have an option, to, or he has to, says, yes, I've done everything that you have asked me to do. It meets all the requirements for the parking, for the footprint, it meets all the government. Guidelines, et cetera. If he's done all that already, and I agree with what, the, what everybody else is saying regarding the parking, it's a, it looks like a dog fest to start there. But if he's met all the requirements and we turn it down, and he wants to go to the next step to appeal it, there's that cost involved as well. So that, I guess that's what I mean by has he met all the requirements? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So they are proposing some additional amendments to the zoning. So they are proposing changes to facilitate the, I guess the, the built form being the stacked and the back to back. So there's, uh, right now they have the ability to build townhouses there. Um, with recent provincial legislation changes, uh, as Chair Carr mentioned, you know, the, there is the ability that they will be able to add additional units through that mechanism. Um, that's not in place at the moment through our zoning bylaw. Um, every townhouse is permitted one additional unit, uh, but that's still double what is currently permitted. Uh, this zoning application does uh, propose reduced provisions, so that's what we need to approve here. In terms of their ability to appeal it, uh, they would have to prove that it is con in conformity with the, uh, the official plan. Um, so that's what we're going to review in this next process, um, whether that's, you know, that's through density, that's through servicing, uh, transportation is obviously a big impact on that. Uh, and we'll review that with the, uh, the provincial policy statement as well and any provincial legislation. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I got a motion on the floor to refer this to staff. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. 6.2 Notice of Complete Application and Introductory Public Meeting for Proposed Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw 10 245, Northern Portion of 40 Yeoman Street, City of Belleville. Owner is 274 9275, Ontario Incorporated. Agent is Spencer Hutchison of RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated and file number B 77 1179. Resolution reads that report number PP 2023 01 dated January 3rd, 2023, regarding Notice of Complete Application. An introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 10245 is amended. 40 Yeoman Street, City of Balboa, County of Hastings be received as information. And the staff report back at such time as input from the public commenting agencies and municipal departments has been received, assessed, and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering and Development Services Department. Moved by Mr. Joyce, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Uh, any questions or comments? See none. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 6.3 Notice of Complete Application and Introductory Public Meeting for Proposed Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw 3014, 452 Clearview Road, City of Belleville. Owner is Greg Hagerty. Agent is Rachel Ogilvie of Frontier Homes Quinty. File number is B 77 1180. Resolution reads that report number PP 2023 03, dated January 3rd, 2023, regarding Notice of Complete Application. An introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended. 452 Clearview Road, City of Belleville, County of Hastings be received as information. And that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies, and municipal 
departments has been received, assessed, and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering and Development Services Department. Moved by Councillor Alsop, seconded by Mr. Jennings. Uh, any questions or comments? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, report 7.1, staff recommendation report for proposed zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 3014, concession 7, part a lot 4, part 1 of plan 21R-10223, formerly Township of Thurlow, now City of Balboa, count, or, yeah, City of Balboa, uh, I think that's supposed to be County of Hastings, owners Brian and Darlene Anderson, file numbers B-77-1176, resolution reads that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. The application B-77-1176 to amend the City of Belleville Zoning Bylaw Number 3014 as amended for Concession 7, Part of Lot 4, Part 1 of Plan 21R-10223, formerly Township of Thurlow, now City of Belleville, be approved as follows. That the Zoning Bylaw Number 3014 as amended be amended to rezone a portion of the severed parcel from Rural RU Zone to Rural Residential RR Zone. Moved by Mr. Jennings, seconded by Mr. Beltutis. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. 7.2, staff recommendation report for z proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 3014, 329 Airport Parkway, City of Belleville. Owner is John Allison and Howard Allison. Agent is Watson Land Surveyors Limited. File number is B-77-1177. Resolution reads that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. That zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended be amended by rezoning the subject lands from Prime Agricultural PA zone to Prime Agricultural PA 58 zone with special provisions to permit, to permit a reduced frontage of 91.1 meters and to prohibit new residential development and the housing of livestock in existing structures at the time of passing of this bylaw to rural residential RR zone and to rural residential RR 73 zone with special provisions to permit a reduced interior side yard setback of four meters. Moved by Mr. Beltutis, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor, that's carried. Uh, 8.1, I uh, have a resolution that the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment monitoring report to January 3rd, 2023 be approved. Um, Councillor Brown and Mr. Choice, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, general business, uh, Councillor Brown. No, I, if I could, I had some questions on the monitoring report. Oh, sorry, report. moving too quickly here. You yep. were trying to speed us along, thank yep. you. Um, my, my question's more for staff. Um, there are a number of items dating back to 2017, 2018, 2020, and I'm just curious. I think one of the, the impetus behind Bill 23 was the fact that development was taking far too long and were there ways that we could clear th through some of this. So I'm, it doesn't have to be here, but I would really be interested in getting a status update on um, B77021, uh, B77040, B77124, and B53-33, given that they're all 2020 and later. Is that possible? Uh, I'll get uh, Director Ashton to make a few comments here. So just with uh, some of the challenges with staff, we haven't had time to sort of go through those old files. Some of them are mm -hmm. basically stagnant and stuff, so we do have to develop a process to sort of close those files officially. We just, hopefully in the new year when, uh, or this is the new year, with uh, some new staff, we can um, look at uh, having some, some focus on that. But right now we're just keeping up with our current applications. Thank you. Um, subsequently to um, application number B77, um, 1130, the print is really tiny, sorry. Um, it shows that we're waiting for comments from CN, um, but I've been led to understand that the CN report has been received and the nearby neighbors are actually asking um, what the status is for this particular item as well. So I'll just, uh, I think uh, that application is still sort of, we're still waiting for some comments from um, rail company, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, 
I think uh, actually our planner, Tom Deming, was uh, following up today. Uh, it looks like uh, one of the planners on file for the applicant is is wanting to say something too. But uh, well, you could, Councillor uh, Brown, if you want to have a conversation after, um, well, we can get that information to you. I've also requested it from planning staff as well. So uh, we'll have a full brief on that one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, any other questions on that as I rush through that? Okay. Uh, my apologies. Uh, we're in general business. Any general business? Okay. Seeing none, I just have some closing remarks. Uh, the Planning Advisory Committee's applicable decisions will be forwarded to City Council for consideration, forming part of the agenda for the City Council meeting to be held. And with that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Mr. Baltudas, Councillor Enright-Miller, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you.